Hi everyone. Uh, since some of you asked for uh, some simple first order op-amp RC circuits, so in this lecture I will try to solve some very simple first order op-amp RC circuits intuitively. So we will start with the circuit. So it is an inverting op-amp amplifier with an RC circuit in the feedback and an inductor at the input port. So first we will try to find out the impulse response and then we will try to find the step response of the system. So the moment I feed an impulse as a voltage at the input, so this is this here is phi which is flux, the unit is volt second. I have already discussed about how to model voltage and current impulses uh, in the course on passive devices. So you can go through that. So if I apply a impulse of voltage across an inductor, then a current, a step current will be developed in an inductor. So the inductor, uh, the current through an inductor cannot change instantaneously. And for it to change instantaneously, you should apply an infinite voltage. So the rate of change of flux should be infinity. Only then you will have a step current in an inductor. So yes, the current will be a step input and that current is simply given by phi upon L. So here it is 1 by L integral VDT. That is the current through the inductor. So what you will get here is phi upon L. So phi, uh, the voltage here is phi into delta of T. So you integrate this function, you will get a step current. Now if you have a step current flowing in the circuit, so we can quickly draw the response now. So we have the circuit reduces to this now, you just have a step current flowing into a parallel RC circuit. So if you see this circuit, you just have one capacitor, so which means it is going to be a first order response. So for a first order response, all you need to know is steady state input, uh, sorry, uh, the response at t equal to 0 and the response at t equal to infinity and the time constant. So at t equal to 0, since it is a step current, it is going to entirely flow through the capacitor. So the capacitor will act like a short circuit. So I said uh, whenever you apply a step input, the capacitor treats it like a, a sinusoid of infinite frequency at t equal to 0. So it will offer 0 impedance and capacitor will short out. So therefore the output will also be at ground. So that is the virtual node will be at 0. So V0 of 0 is 0. At t equal to infinity, all this current, it is a DC current, so capacitor is an open circuit, so all this current will flow through the resistor. So which means V0 of infinity will be I into R. So I here is phi by L into R. So mind you, so that is the voltage across the resistor in this direction. So this voltage Vr is phi R by L, but V0 here, so since this node is at AC, this node is at virtual ground, V0 is minus Vr, so V0 of infinity will be minus of phi R by L. So now you know the initial voltage, final voltage and the time constant, it is just RC, so you can plot the response. It is going to look like this. So it is minus phi R by L starting from 0 with the time constant of RC. In the next example, so before I discuss the next example, I will just quickly refresh your memory on step response, uh, sorry, ramp responses of first order systems. If you feed a ramp input T into U of T to a first order system, the output of the system will look like a delayed ramp in the steady state. Initially, its output will raise slowly and eventually it will try to behave like a delayed ramp signal. So if you plot its steady state response, it will that uh, the ramp response will look like it is aligning with this line t minus tau into u of t. Okay, And the gap between there is always a finite error between the input and the output signals that is given by it depends on the slope of the input ramp and also the delay the, ti the time constant of the first order system. So that can easily be found by extending this uh, line and see, see the point where it intersects the y axis. So here since it is a system with a slope of 1, uh, that is the point uh, at t equal to 0, it will be tau. So this, this gap here will be tau. So the gap between these two points will be tau here. Now mind you, it depends upon the slope of the signal. So for example, if I assume st, s being the slope of the ramp. S here, this is a unit ramp, so the slope will be 1, ST, that is the slope of the ramp, then 
the voltage difference here will be s tau so keeping this in mind we will now try to analyze uh, the circuit here shown here for a step input now if i apply a step input again the entire step voltage will appear across the inductor and the current through the inductor uh, will build linearly it will increase linearly and its integral of the voltage so it will be vx by l into t so this is going to be the current flowing through the inductor so i can similarly model the circuit here so you here instead of a step current you now have a ramp current so again if you if you have to draw the ramp current uh, if you know the time constant you can easily draw the ramp current because the steady state value is infinity it starts from zero and then uh, goes to infinity so first if you have a first order circuit intuitively we can look at it you have a ramp current flowing through this at t equal to zero if you see this function ramp function at t equal to zero the slope of the function is there is a discontinuity discontinuity or the slope changes suddenly initially it was a slope was zero at t equal to zero plus it will become a finite value and it's given by vx by l so that's like a high frequency input so whenever the slope changes suddenly it means it's a high frequency input so at t equal to zero it will look like a high frequency input and all this current will flow through the capacitor so the output voltage will actually be zero it will start from zero and you can see that at t equal to zero since you have a ramp current flowing through a capacitor the voltage across the capacitor will be a parabolic function it will be an integral of ramp so it will be a parabolic function and the voltage across the capacitor it will increase so this node will be at a higher voltage than the output or we can plot the output this way so at t equal to zero uh, yeah so and also uh, to plot the response i should also look at the steady state current the steady state if you look at the steady state response the ramp current in the steady state will entirely flow through the resistor so i can assume that i into r as the graph here so since we are drawing a first order response you can simply delay this by tau seconds and draw another parallel line so that will be your first order response asymptotically it will reach this the first order response will reach this so this line here is vx by l into r into t so this is your voltage across the resistor okay in the steady state i mean had there been no capacitor so had there been no capacitor then there will be no delay in the system so this entire ramp current will flow through the resistor and the output is going to look like this but because there is a capacitor there is a finite time constant associated with it this will be the actual steady state response it will be delayed by tau seconds okay and the delay comes because uh, if you see you are feeding a ramp current here initially that current flows through the capacitor and uh, and and so there is some loss of time there so it is going to take some time to build to this steady state value okay and there will always be a finite voltage difference between uh, or rather you know uh, there will always be a finite current difference so you are feeding a ramp current if there was no capacitor this entire ramp current would have flown through the resistor but because of the presence of a capacitor what's going to happen is that the voltage across the resistor in the steady state will be a ramp which means the voltage across the capacitor will also be a ramp which means the current through the capacitor will be a step so there will be a constant current flowing in the capacitor in the steady state the current through the capacitor will look like this initially it will be zero and it will build to a maximum value and what is that maximum value of current uh, vx by l into t this is the input current okay and the value of current which is flowing through the capacitor can be estimated by appro i mean finding the asymptotic value so which is vx by l into t into r will be the asymptotic voltage across the resistor steady state voltage across the resistor differentiate this and cdv by dt will give you the step current so that will be rc into vx upon l so this will be your dc current flowing through the capacitor so capacitor is carrying a dc current it means the voltage across the capacitor is a ramp the voltage is just increasing linearly and the response will look like this
So now we look at the other circuit. So I've just slightly modified the feedback network. If you feed an impulse of voltage to an inductor here shown here. So again, there will be a step current and this step current is now going to flow through uh, a network that looks like this. So at t equal to zero, the capacitor will act like a short circuit. So again, uh, this circuit, I can just replace the inductor by a current source, a step current source. And in the feedback network, you have just an R, C and R. So there is only one capacitor. So which means it's going to be a, a first order, a first order system. So at t equal to zero, at t equal to zero, this since it's a sudden change in the current, the capacitor will act like a short circuit. So the, and you'll just have a impedance of R by two. R and R will come in parallel. The impedance will be R by two. So you'll have a step current of value zero to phi upon L. So the voltage V naught of zero is going to be phi upon L into R by two. Okay, that's the voltage at zero plus at t equal to zero plus at zero. Uh, the voltage at the output is going to be phi upon L into R by two. Now in the steady state, the capacitor is going to behave like an open circuit. So which means all the current will have to flow through the resistor. In the steady state, V of infinity, sorry, there will be a minus sign here. So V of infinity will again be minus of phi by L into R. So now you know the initial and final responses, you can directly plot the response. So T equal to zero, it starts from minus of phi by L into R by two, and it will reach a value of minus of phi by L into R. That's the steady state value it will reach. Okay, this sudden jump, why does this sudden jump occur? That can be explained because of a zero. Okay, so we can, uh, if you, I mean, if you derive a transfer function, you can see that in the presence of zero, you can see some sudden jumps in first order responses. Okay, so we derived it intuitively, but you can check it by rigorously performing an analysis and you will see that there is a zero on the circuit. Now in the next circuit, I have capacitor at the input terminal, uh, at the input port and inductor in the f uh, in a resistor in, and uh, a network com comprising of resistor and inductor uh, in the feedback network. Now again, we are supposed to find the step response for the circuit. So if I apply a step voltage across a capacitor, the current that's going to develop in the capacitor is going to be an impulse. So it's a derivative of voltage, it will be an impulse. So your again, voltage across the capacitor cannot change instantaneously. But if it is forced to change instantaneously, then it will require or it will ask for an impulse of current. If the voltage source is able to provide that, then an impulse current will be flowing through the capacitor. Now this impulse of current at t equal to zero, inductor will behave like an open circuit. It's going to think it's an infinite frequency signal and therefore inductor's impedance will be infinity. So inductor is going to behave like an open circuit. So what will happen here is that all that impulse of current will flow through this resistor here. So the impulse of current here is given by uh, C Vx into delta of t. Okay, so that C Vx is the charge so into delta of t, that's the impulse of current. All of that will flow through this resistor R. So the voltage across the resistor R at t equal to zero will be an impulse signal. And the value of that is given by C Vx into R into delta of T. So at V naught of zero, you will see an impulse signal. So, but here it will be negative. It will be negative impulse because the voltage across the resistor. This will be at a higher potential compared to the output node. So what you will see here is a negative impulse of value minus Rc into Vx into delta of T. Now the moment you have an impulse of voltage across the resistor, this impulse of voltage will appear across inductor and resistor in series. But we said the inductive impedance is infinity at t equal to zero. So therefore that's going to offer a large impedance. So most of the voltage will fall, drop across this. So this entire impulse of voltage will drop across the inductor. Now the moment an impulse of voltage drop, drops across an inductor, 
a step current will be set in the inductor and the value of that step current is given by r c v x delta of t this is the impulse of voltage so divided by l so it will be integral of this function so it will be r c into v x upon l so this will be the current which is instantly built across the inductor now mind you the current through the capacitor immediately it's an impulse and after that it goes to zero so this current has now become zero so the current entering here at zero plus is zero after the impulse it just goes down to zero which means by kirchhoff's current law you can directly see the current that that the op amp is drawing in so that was also an impulse of current will also go down to zero immediately after t equal to zero it will be an impulse of current flowing through the resistor and it will flow through the op amp at the op amp's output and after that the current goes to zero so which means then what happens to the current in the inductor that current will simply loop around this resistor and inductor path until all that energy you have now you are providing some initial energy into the inductor that will be half li square until all that energy is dissipated in the resistors that current will keep looping in this lr circuit okay so since we know that in the steady state the energy has to go down to zero in the circuit so the initial current across the inductor we know the initial current across the inductor that current since it's going to loop around so it's going to flow this way and through the resistor so we also know what is the initial voltage across the resistor that initial voltage take this current multiplied by r that's going to be the initial voltage so i'm going to write it as v not of 0 ignoring the impulse so this is 0 plus after the impulse this is what's happening in the circuit you are going to have vx c r square by l so if you see c r square it has units of inductance uh, if you have studied circuits called chiratives you can immediately recognize that okay so v not of 0 plus it's going to be v c r square by l that's the voltage across this resistor all this current is going to flow through uh, the resistor and the voltage will develop across the resistor of this value now we know the steady state voltage eventually it's going to go to zero because the current in the inductor energy in the inductor goes to zero which means the current in the inductor goes to, goes to zero so it will come down to zero so you will in the circuit at the out, initially you will get an impulse then the output voltage will go from a peak value given by this vx c r square by l and eventually it will decay down to zero okay and the value the time constant of this circuit will simply be the time constant of the feedback network you just have an inductor and a resistor and another resistor here so the equivalent resistance seen by this inductor will be the series of the two resistors so it will be time constant will be l upon 2r that will be your time constant in the circuit so that's how the time domain response of this circuit looks like Now, I have just taken a slight variation or a modification of the same circuit. Uh, you will get some, uh, just to show you how to find the time constants, so which is why I took a slightly different circuit. At the input side, it looks the same. You have applied a step input. So, which means an impulse of current will be set in this capacitor. And that impulse of current will start flowing through this impedance network. So, the impulse of current that is going to flow through this will be C Vx into delta of T. That is the impulse of current. And that current, because the inductor will act like an open circuit, will flow through these two resistors. So the output voltage at T equal to 0, uh, I'll write it at 0, that's the moment the impulse, the impulse had just arrived. It's going to be C Vx into 2R, because both the resistors are in series. So it will be C Vx delta of T into 2R. So it will be 2RC into delta, 2RC Vx into delta of T. So the output uh, sorry there will be negative sign here looking at the direction of currents so the output will be an impulse of value minus of 2 rc vx into delta of t after that since 
the voltage i mean an impulse of current is flowing through this resistor here it will develop an impulse of voltage and that impulse of voltage will appear across an inductor so a step current will be set in this inductor now we said that in the previous problem the current through the capacitor goes to zero after the impulse it just dies down to zero so since no current enters here no current leaves at this point as well so which means the current through the resistor r here is zero as well so which means the voltage across this resistor will also be zero so i can assume it's just a short after zero plus so now the circuit just reduces to an inductor and resistor in parallel the initial voltage uh, the initial voltage is determined by a the current which is set in the inductor so that will be the impulse voltage will be you know the impulse current c vx into delta of t times r that's the voltage across the resistor now if you divide integrate this and divide this by l you will get the initial current set in the inductor that current will loop this way it's going to flow through this and it will loop around this l and r because this current has to be zero and the input current is zero so it has no other path it will keep looping between uh, the inductor and resistor so looking at the direction of current we can say the voltage across the resistor is going to be this current multiplied by r so it will be c vx into c r square by l that's the initial voltage and eventually it's going to decay down to zero because we discussed the inductor energy is going to go to zero which means current goes to zero and the time constant is given by l upon r so it starts from vx c r square by l and it goes down to zero thank you